Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad project. So let's get cracking. Friends, welcome to the Domino Starter Project for a house. You can make other things, but I'm going to show you quickly how to make the house. First things first, this little domino is the one that I want everybody to use. It's 6 by 16 by 28. It's also saved as a shape. A smart thing for you to do is save it as a shape as well because you can use it again and again. Simply go to your creations and hit create shape. It'll pop up after a moment. You can, of course, give it a name. I'm going to call mine Domino. Do not lock the part size. You could tag it if you want. And I'm going to simply hit save shape. It'll show up up here and you'll be able to use it forever and ever. As you can see, I did it twice. So I'm going to click on one of these and I'm going to hit delete. That's how you clean up any parts you don't need. I have also taken our world and I've made it larger. Normally this is 200 by 200, but I batch space and I raised it to 500 by 500. You can go as large as 1000 by 1000, but I thought this was a good start. Next, we're going to take our domino and we're going to build a house out here. I'm going to move to the edge, but I want to leave room to launch it. I'm going to go back to basic shapes and I'm going to launch this with the simple wedge. If you want to have a more creative way, you can work on that. I'm going to lift it up just a little bit and then I'm going to drop a sphere out here. I'm going to hold down shift and make the sphere just a little bit smaller. And let's select them all and do one last align before we start. The trick that makes this work, everybody, is to change our nudge to five millimeters. Now, when we click on the domino and do control D and move forward three clicks, it's at a good distance for a domino. And if you don't touch anything else and do control D, bingo, you can start making your design super fast. That's how easy it is to build them. Let me show you how slick it is testing them. So when you bring them into SibLab, it takes a moment for them to load. The part that we don't want to fall, you need to make static. It's fine that the ball rolls. If we hit play, bingo, you've got working dominoes. You can pause, you can replay, you can have a ton of fun setting up your epic domino project. Let's go back and let's make a roof. Although I am going to move this out a little further. So once again, control D, one, two, three, Control D, D, D to get to the height I want. I think that's pretty good. And let's see if we can just turn this at an angle. I'm going to do Control D on this one, nudge it out. Let's say three clicks. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do F for fit view. And let's see if it'll tip at that angle or if I have to build a mechanism. Now, I do want to nudge out this way. Watch this trick. W to get on this. So that's my new work point. Now, if I do control D, I want to do control down one, two, three. I'm pushing through the work plane to keep that angle. If I do control D a bunch more times, we have just built a roof. I'm going to put the work plane back on the ground. The shortcut is W and we can see how that looks. Now let's go test it in SimLab to see if it can handle this sort of a turn. Once again, click and play. Bingo, we have a working roof. We are going to do a quick update. I want you to bring out these three connectors. They are amazing and they're going to help us a ton with what we do next. Quickly return to the main editor. Now, friends, here comes the epic part. We've got those a little bit out of our way. Get it at an angle so you can see it and only grab your dominoes. Do control D and then do shift nudge to move it across. Notice it does not take too many clicks because of that five millimeter nudge. And then we can use mirror, bingo, we have got our sweet house. Now we need to come up with a way to change the way the dominoes flip. Watch this. Because of these new connectors, it is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna do control D because I wanna reuse these later. And I'm gonna bring this over close to the area. I'm going to bring out a cylinder and I'm going to bring out a cube. Now you can play and come up with different techniques, but I just want you to see this one. And I'm going to shift select them. I'm going to do L for a line and I want middle and I want middle. Then I'm going to do control up to raise them up above the dominoes. So this is giving me my area where it's going to spin. 
To get it lined up, I'm going to switch to a one millimeter nudge. That way I can get it closer to the middle of the shape. I'm also going to pick a different color so it doesn't show up as much. And I'm going to make it smaller. So I am just doing Alt Shift Shrink back towards its middle. So it's a small skinny disc. We'll make this one stationary. It'll be up in the air and it's going to connect to these cubes. Well, all right, so this part is super cool. Shift shrink to make this tiny. I'm going to make it white so it blends in with the domino. And then we are going to cruise this little guy right onto the domino. So that means when this domino pushes forward, it's going to push that. I'm going to just push it out a little ways. Now I want to do control D and I'm going to hit C for cruising on that domino. And I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to pull it out a couple clicks. You could also do control up. And are you ready for this, friends? We have just made an axle where this one will push. It'll spin around the middle and it'll push that one. If we shift select these two, I'm going to do control G to group them. And let's take this to the sim lab and let me show you how it works. Of course, there's the sim lab button. Wait for the geometry to be real. Click on the white one and we do need to make sure it's static. Now we need to take our axle and let's connect it where it goes. First one we grab, we want the blue one to be out on these two pieces we built. We want the orange one to be on our cylinder. Let's spin around, check out the world from this angle, and when we hit play, <laughs> that spins forever, bam. We have got a domino project that goes all the way through. Friends, as you can see, I've added a window. Let me show you a super slick way to use our current dominoes to make it launch. So once again, I want to use our parts we already have. I'm going to carefully grab those three. Notice I'm just barely touching them. It says three shapes. I can do control D and I can shift nudge to move them back so that we can use them. And then I'm going to shift nudge over to where I want to use them. I am going to keep these two, but I'm going to delete this part. The part I want is really easier if it's a rectangle. I'm going to just bring it out, cruise it on that shape, and then I'm going to shift squeeze it down to like size five. I do want it to be a skinny size five though, and I need there to be two of them. Control D, and then I'm going to nudge it close to that middle area, and then I want all of these three to be aligned. So shift select, shift select, Control G to group those two, shift select, shift select, check three shapes, and align, and we're going to just choose center and center. We don't group those, we just align them. So check it out. This domino pushes this, the connector gets connected to the red one, and the orange one connects to the white disc. So now friends, we need to do a skinny selection. Check out this trick. We are going to switch to what's called the flat view or the orthographic. Now we are looking straight down so it's super simple to grab those three shapes, do control D and nudge them so that this happens. We just need this spinner to be so that this hits right in the middle. See how that's going to poke right there? Watch this. We can even double click and we can nudge this one a little forward so that it's ready to hit. And we can click this one and move it so it's a little back. It's so slick how you can modify these in only a second. Of course, going to make them white so that they don't show up so much. And then I'm going to switch back to my perspective view because I do prefer that. And let's go give this new piece a test. Once again, Sim Lab. Wait for your parts to become real and hit play. Now notice this one fell apart. We can fix that super quick. If we hit reset, we just need to click the connector and tell it which one it's connected to, which is that one right there. And then of course the orange one was connected to this one right here. Once again, play, there go our parts and bingo, dominoes are working. We do need to make the other corners. I'll reset, take you back here and show you how quickly that can happen as well. We will reuse these parts from below. Once again, I'm going to switch to the flat view. Let's zoom in, pan. 
middle mouse button is how I pan. And then I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to shift click on this and do control D and let's move it up to these other parts. We're going to just change how this orients. We want to put the disc and the axle right back here inside the corner. You move them separate or together, doesn't really matter. And then we want these to be adjusted so that one is exactly in the middle this way and the other is exactly in the middle that way. It's that easy. Of course, we do need to double check our pivot. I'm going to switch back to my perspective view and I want the blue one to connect to those parts and I want the orange one to still be connected right there. I am going to shift select and shift drag to grab the three parts. Let's do control D, move that same thing over here, but rotate it 90 degrees. Once again, get it into the corner. You can see that this will push here, that'll push there. Let's do one more control D. It got close to the right spot because it memorized that measurement. Matter of fact, that might have been absolutely perfect. I shouldn't have touched it. I'm going to double check to make sure that I'm on perspective view just because I prefer that in the long run. Let's go to the sim lab and let's test our new house with a window. Once again, hit play, bingo, and bango. Friends, how cool is that? Of course, now you can pause, you can slide it back, and check out the fun options you've got with different connectors as you make your own epic domino house. Add doors, other windows, maybe a building going out here. Remember, you can change it to 1,000 by 1,000. You can also have fun adjusting colors. There's so much that you can do as you make such an awesome domino project. Of course, when you finish this project and want to share it with the world, here are the steps that I always use. First, click down on settings and of course, pick an awesome background color. I'm going to choose a grassy green and I'm going to shut off that grid. It just looks much cooler when you create your thumbnails. Next, you click up here on the Tinkercad workspace. Click on the gear and choose your properties. Of course, give your project a great name. Mine, of course, says starter. Yours will have something way more epic. I like to fill in my description, noting that the tutorial is coming soon. Of course, you can check out the sweet new shares by clicking that link. And then I share different ways you can reach out. Of course, friends, add some tags. And if you add the tag HLMT23, I search that tag almost every day. And of course, when I see your projects, I will give you a reaction. Finally, make your design public. And then I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because instead of copying my work, I want you to come up here, follow the tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Lastly, hit save changes. Of course, you may have to prove you're not a robot. Of course, friends, just a quick reminder, I cannot wait to see just how far you push this fun Tinkercad Sim Lab project. Of course, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to mention my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you look down in the corner, friends, of course, you will find the built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. At the top of the page, you can find a link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, we've got a boatload of members and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.